and I'm back here with another video. So today's video is gonna be a Woke Wednesday. And today's Woke Wednesday is gonna be the idea of vulnerability. With me personally, I grew up in a household where it was whatever happens at home stays at home. Um, keep your mouth closed, mind your business, um, this, this, and that. So in doing that, I found that I kept a lot of stuff in. I never dealt with any problems. I never discussed when things made me unhappy, when things made me uncomfortable. I had a hard time telling people no. I still have a hard time telling people no. And after my assault happened, my first visit, I'm not gonna cry. If you've watched my Me Too video, um, I wrote a poem about what happened to me. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the only thing that happened to me prior to that event. There were things that were happening to me after that event. There were things that were still happening to me, not with the same person, but I kept finding myself in these certain situations and I really had to take a step back and be like, okay, these are things you need to master, like statements that I need to master before I tried to get involved with anybody. And this is why I said that I am taking time for myself and I'm really learning myself and enriching myself in crafts and service. Um, I'm doing, I just, um, became a certified counselor for this organization called Stand Up For Kids DC and it's um, it's catered toward youth, um, homeless youth within the DC area and I'm also a trained counselor for Reading Partners DC and that is um, an organization that helps with children's development within reading and I can do videos on those later but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about but the, those are examples of things that I started doing to like get back to my passions and get back to what I'm passionate about and helping others. Doing an active way of helping people after the fact. Like the reason I wanted to help out with homeless youth is because uh, when I did Black Girls Are Magical, um, our first conference, I was hearing all these stories and I was realizing a lot of people didn't have support with what they're going through. Like they had to get what they're going through and like are kind of in the healing process. And I want to be an active part of the healing process, but while it's still a problem so that's why i decided to join stand up for kids dc so with that being said um i recently just decided that i am not i am working on me right now and i am learning about myself and what i'm passionate about um and just finding ways to utilize my passions really so with that being said i've taken the time to just take time for me and just work on me right now statements that I feel like anybody, I'm just gonna share this with y'all because I think it's important. Statements that I feel like any and everybody should learn to master is, no, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't like your energy. I am not obligated to do anything with you. I am not obligated to, I'm not obligated to have sex with you. I'm not obligated to give myself up to you. I'm not obligated to do anything for you. You feel me? Um. Just, you're making me uncomfortable. I don't give my number out. Um, no. <laughs> and no seems like so simple, but I realized that I have so much that I didn't deal with when I was younger that it makes me hard for these simple statements to come out of my mouth. It's just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot for me to explain on camera and it's just some things that I probably won't say on camera because like, I'm not ready to share with. I'll say that it's just something I'm just not ready to share right now like a lot of people will be like oh that's your business like you shouldn't be you shouldn't be talking about that and that's what I want to talk about today yes everybody has their own personal business right but the reasons things keep happening traumatic instances keep happening to people and people don't know how to deal with it and people are fall into depression and people fall into these states where it's like they don't know what to do it's because nobody talks about it and because nobody is there for them until it's extreme until they want to harm themselves so the reason I share um, stories that have happened to me things that I have dealt with things that I'm dealing with things that I'm healing from is because if I can help someone else if I can just be just be an example that says that oh she got through it oh she's going through it oh i have someone to talk to oh this is normal oh these feelings are normal i don't want to not talk about something because it makes someone uncomfortable because 
my trauma and my pain makes me uncomfortable and keeping that inside and me learning how to deal with it and grow and keeping that to myself that's selfish and i want to share what i've gotten through and i want to share why i'm passionate about certain things and i want to share how you can recover from situations like that and i know i kind of just posted that video and like went on about life but i'm still in the process of recovering and healing and when i get to that point where i feel like okay i'm a better um place than i was six um five six months ago then i can be like this is how you deal with it. These are the thoughts that I was having. This is what I was doing when this happened. Because it's so easy to say, oh, everything's fine. You will have, it's a, healing is a roller coaster. So, some days are great. Some days are bad. Some days you make a lot of progress. Sometimes you come back. And it's just like one of those things where it's like, it's a process. Everything is a process. Everything happens for a reason. And it makes you so, 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 so. So much stronger and it gives you such tough skin like the things that I have gone through like I've always been like God why me like why do I have to deal with this like enough like I'm tired I'm tired and I felt like I was like well why why did these things keep happening to me why why me There's, I was just always asking that why me why me and I always have my aunts telling me that <sighs> I'm gonna get emotional <laughs> I always have my aunts and I always have my great grandmother always instill God within me, right? They always made sure that I had a backbone of faith in my spirituality. And as I grow and as I learn more about myself, I've learned that that at the end of the day, God does not put you through anything that you cannot handle. So everything that I'm going through, paying for school, dealing with um dealing with people dealing with men all these things it's gonna make me so much stronger and my success my success in life is gonna is is like i can't even explain it right now like i'm just so emotional because i know everything that i've been through is gonna pay off and i'm gonna inspire so many people and so i'm gonna touch the lives of so many people because so many people already tell me that i do that now that i already inspired them because of the things that I've gone through and my strength and I'm not only strong just to inspire others but for myself because if I don't have a strong hand on myself I will not get through anything in life and everything that I've been through has has made me has made me in the person I am today the person that I'm learning to love and the person that I am discovering and figuring out like just what my passions are and just putting my passions to work putting my passions to craft the concept of vulnerability makes you weak is false being vulnerable makes you stronger being vulnerable helps it helps so many people that you don't understand it touches the lives of so many people and what you've been through like after I remember after I started sharing um, what had happened um, in January, so many people were like, it, this is what really broke my heart. Um, Cause I think I said, um, I started doing, when I was doing my mental detoxes, um, I wrote a note about it. And so many people started messaging me like, this happened to me, your courage to speak out and watching your healing has inspired me and this, that and the other. And it's just like, the amount of people that reached out to me and said that it was like wow I was like it took a toll on me it was discouraging because it was like the amount of freshmen the amount of people that just got here in the same boat as me like that had had like had something happen to the to them like this I can't be silent I can't just deal with it myself I can't keep my healing and my recovery to myself I have to share how I'm dealing with it. I have to share the progress of my recovery. I have to share. I have to share that it's healthy to express yourself. I have to share that it's healthy to, to get that out because everything that I went through in my life is impacting me in some way, shape, or form. Even when I was younger, like always told to keep stuff in, it was hard. That's why I that's why I love writing. I always used to journal. I always used to because I couldn't talk. I could talk to a journal. I could talk. I could put my pain to poetry. I could put my pain 
into a pen, into paper. I could put my pain into a story. Like, the stories I used to write in second grade, I used to get in trouble for it because my, my teacher would be like, that's not appropriate. And I was just like, I wish she took the time to sit there and talk to me. She was one of my favorite teachers, but I wish she took the time to sit there and talk to me because I needed that. So when I'm doing reading partners, I want to be able to um, share love for reading, share my love for reading and writing, and hopefully I can inspire these children and make sure that they're good because I didn't have that and make sure that they're they're okay it's someone to talk to it's someone in their corner with them even though it's curriculum based even though like it's so even with kids nowadays like i've worked with kids in high school um when i did this program working with fourth graders it's so easy to write a kid off like oh he's bad he doesn't like to read well there's everything is situational like there's so much to so much deeper meaning to everyone like, well, maybe he's hungry. Maybe he had a rough night. Maybe, maybe she, maybe, like, maybe somebody wasn't listening. Maybe, like, she's just, like, having a bad day. But it's so easy to label people off as emotional or too sensitive. That's completely valid and that's completely okay. And that's what I want to talk to y'all today about my woke Wednesday. But I didn't expect to cry. I didn't want to cry. One day, I know I am going to impact the lives of so many people. And I've, I, I know that I'm, it's going to be monumental because I, just the feedback that I get now, like the messages that I get now, even like the stuff that I post, like my Twitter, um, my Snapchat, my Instagram, like I'm always posting some reflection of me on my platform, various platforms. So the concept of vulnerability and keeping your business to yourself. There's a time and a place for everything, right? There's a time and a place and a way to express yourself in a healthy way. So, I'm gonna say, everything is not everyone's business. Like, there's some things y'all probably don't know about me. There's a lot, there's a lot of things y'all don't know about me, right? <laughs> and um, I plan to write a book um, someday. I feel like there's something some people don't need to know about you, but they don't need to know about you right now. Um, there's some things people won't ever know about you and that's okay but this notion that you need to keep everything to yourself this notion that and that some things you just got to deal with and get through it like I feel like a lot of adults minimize especially within the black community they minimize children's pain like I remember I would tell my mom um, I'm stressed like my face will break out and y'all have y'all noticed that my skin has cleared <laughs> my skin has cleared since i've been out of high school like when i tell y'all high school was hell for me i can't even like put it to words i can't even like um that's gonna that's gonna take some while for me to get over that because i'm still dealing with that now that i'm in college like dealing with the issues that i didn't deal with then and i'm dealing with them now like i told my mom right i was like my skin it breaks out because I'm stressed. She was stressed. What you got to be stressed about? You ain't got no bills to pay. You ain't da 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 And it's like, mom, it's like, mama, don't minimize my pain. <laughs> it's like, that feeling that your feelings aren't valid, the feeling that it's like, you have no right to this, this, and that. Like, you can't judge someone's pain. You can't judge someone's suffering. You can't judge someone's trauma just because you don't understand it. So what I challenge everyone to do is listen, 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 listen to when someone wants to talk to you, listen to another person's point of view and try to understand, try to discuss before you get angry. If you sit there and have a discussion and actually listen and be civil, that's real adulthood. Like everybody wants to be grown, but no one wants to communicate. And I feel like that's our biggest problem. And I feel like that's why I wanted to do, um, that's why I chose uh, broadcast, I chose broadcast journalism, but I, some part of me wish I wishes I uh, double majored in broadcast journalism and TV and film because I wanna produce art in movies and I wanna direct and I wanna t 
tell a story artistically and i feel like with broadcast journalism there's a certain way you gotta do that but that's why i'm trying to build my platform now because i want to be able to have a, a image and a brand to express myself on and to help others and that's something i've always been passionate about i've always been passionate about other people's well-beings i've always been passionate about how a person is doing just because of the things that i went through and i'm starting to understand that as i get older that that's okay I've started to understand why I am the way that I am and it's helped me to pick out qualities and friends. It's helped me to pick out qualities and what you want to do because you always have to have a purpose to what you want to do and it's starting to help me understand Elise better. Um, it's helped me understand what I want to do with my platform, She's Priceless, because the meaning behind my name, well, my last name's Price. <laughs> I've had that since like I was 14 and I was like... Maybe you priceless. There's no limit to you. She's priceless means that I'm priceless. Not just me, but it just wants me to look at the values in all people and examine the values in all people and help them understand that they have qualities that make them unique. Everyone has qualities that make them unique and makes them them. Society now was lacking empathy. And I, I just can't, like, I'm such an empathetic person <laughs> that I feel, and I feel, sometimes I feel like I feel too much, and I put my trust in too many people. And that's what I'm learning now. I'm learning how to, I, well, I would say circle, but the friend group damn near, period. <laughs> but I always have the support of my best friend. I always have the support of, I have a lot of support in my life. Can you say everyone's your friend? No. But I have a lot of support and I have a lot of healthy acquaintanceship, acquaintances, relationships that I, that people know where we stand and I absolutely admire and it's like they inspire me and I adore what they're doing with their lives. But it's like not everyone can know you on a personal deep level. And even though I share a lot, I don't even know how much, I don't want to say I share a lot. I share, I share things that I think will impact people's life and help someone else. And by doing that, I know, I know, I know, I know it's for the good. It's for the good. Growing up, I didn't always have the support that I needed. I didn't always have healthy, commu I didn't, ha I definitely didn't have healthy communication skills. I definitely felt invalidated. I dealt with a lot of insecurities. I'm still dealing with some insecurities. I wasn't very, I was very insecure. I wasn't confident in a lot of things that I started doing. And I started, and when I started to figure myself out around sophomore year, when I was 16, when I started doing poetry, I was like, okay, okay, we're going somewhere. We, we're finding some purpose because baby depression, depression is real. And in high school that it almost broke me. It almost broke, but my guidance counselor was my backbone and she pushed me and she made like she was the reason that I am where I am today. Like she's the reason I'm at Howard. She's the reason. Even though even though, you know, Howard tried to play us and didn't want to give us no aid or nothing, she was like, if this is what you really want to do, then do it. And I'm here. I'm here. Networking, opportunities, all that. So today's woke Wednesday. I wanted to talk about vulnerability and the idea of keeping your business to yourself and the idea of not being validated. I hope I did a good job doing that. I haven't done Woke Wednesday, Wednesdays in such a long time. Such, such, such a long time, y'all. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. Discuss your thoughts, discuss your opinions. Um, let's find some common ground. Because without discussion, I must like what I said today I, I'm speaking of my experience my experience may not be your experience so let's discuss leave a comment down below make sure you give this video a big old thumbs up make sure you like comment share subscribe and join the fam join the priceless fam peace has been gracious priceless I love you all Mwah.